please rise and let's say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And please join us in our congregational hymn, What a Wonderful World. I see trees of green, red roses too. I see them bloom for me and you. And I think to myself, what a wonderful world. I see skies of blue. Thank you. That's what we're talking about. All right, we're going to do our meditation right now, a five-minute meditation, and I'll bring you out of it afterwards. So you're going to focus on God is the love that I am, or whatever mantra works for you, God is, I am, I am one with the one, whatever you're feeling in your heart, focus on that. And when your mind wanders, just gently come right back.
Good morning. <clears throat> I'm gonna let love every day. I'm gonna let love in every way. I'm gonna let love and get love to carry me through. I'm gonna let love lead me to you. I'm gonna know love. That was Jamie Lula, everyone. Good morning. morning. Welcome. I'm happy you're here with us. I'm happy to have you on Facebook. Happy you're on Zoom. However you're here, we're glad you made it. Um, I look at this statement from uh, the teachings of Jesus where he says, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. So when I sit with that, when I think about that, when I pray on that, what that means to me, I mean, that's something that I've been unpacking and working with for years. See, what I do is I find a statement in the Bible, and then I kind of work with it and think about it and sit with it and meditate and use that as like a building block to build my faith. So I look at this, I am come that you might have life and have it more abundantly as a, a promise that comes to us through those who have gone before us on the spiritual path. Now, I think all of life, not just any one area, is supposed to be abundant, is supposed to be full, is supposed to be expressed. Um, people, I think, catch a vision of a larger life, a better life, and, and, and wish uh, it could be so. You know, they're like, oh, wouldn't that be nice? But that's not for me. Oh, gosh, that's too bad. Oh, you know, there's always sort of like a, like they sort of see the promised land, but settle for the Motel 6, you know? Uh, so then we go back. I think what happens is we tend to go back to our habitual thinking, and we talk ourselves out of a better existence. Now, 
Science of Mind teaches us in the goodness of God, the ongoing givingness of the Spirit, that God, which is infinite in its nature, knows only to give of itself to all of us all the time. So Science of Mind says that the gift has already been given, right? God is already doing everything that God is going to do. So if something's going to change, if something's going to be different, what does that mean? It means I'm the one who's got to do something different. Oh, we, we can live, I think, a much fuller life, fuller life, healthier, prosperous, love-filled, creatively expressed. I think that's available to us all right now even in our present circumstances. See, because circumstances are not what needs to change. It does not require more money. It does not require a better job or a new spouse or a better spouse, <laughs> a different love than we have in our life or anything like that. What it does is it requires a change in consciousness. And you and I, we can absolutely do this. You can control what's happening in your consciousness, how your consciousness is either moving forward, expanding, loving more, including more, or how your consciousness is regressing and including less and loving less. See, the moment you decide, now hear this word, decide, the moment you decide to have a bigger, richer expression of life, your consciousness will devise the ways and the means of you having it. Right? That you are not at the effect of life. And I think so often we think like we are. Oh, well, because of this, I'm this way. Because of that, I'm this way. The truth is, you, right now, as a being of consciousness, as a spiritual being, you are at cause in your existence right now. And you have to be certain you want a richer life, a more abundant expression of life. You have to decide Yes, I will have it. I will have it. See, it all depends on you. Not people, not events, not circumstances outside of you. If you want a bigger life out here in the world, it requires a larger, fuller knowing in here, in consciousness. Something has to happen in here before something happens out here. So situations don't develop all on their own. Isn't that amazing? Like nothing just happened. Well, this just happened out of the blue. It wasn't the blue. So in the Psalms, in the Psalms we read, Thou openest thy hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. So that's talking about the givingness, the divine givingness of the Spirit. And satisfies the desire of every living thing. This is the desire, the desire of givingness in which we are all immersed. I'm sorry, this is the divine givingness in which we are all immersed. You know, Ernest Holmes says that grace is the divine givingness of the Spirit, that God's grace is being showered upon us all the time. God only knows to give of God's self to all of us, equally and alike all the time. Now, God, the infinite mind, cannot create a limited creation. Hmm. So you and I are the unlimited creation of an unlimited source, and this source is always giving us ideas, and possibilities, and potentials, it expresses itself through us. So the infinite is a divine, it's like a divine extravaganza, if you will, right? It's forever giving of itself to us. You know, God, I love this, I've read this in the Science of Mind, that God knows no thrift, right? So God doesn't know to withhold or hold back or skim off the top, or anything like that. That we are the receivers of the infinite bounty, and ideas come to us to express in a greater way. Now, you and I both know that sometimes we are very receptive to those ideas to express in a greater way. And we go, wow, that's a great idea. Where has that been all my life? I'm going to do that. And then other times, ideas come to us, and we go, that came to the wrong address. You know, that surely must have been for somebody else. I'm not going to do that. So we have to be able to receive from the infinite in order to be able to give to the infinite, right? So we receive, we give back. We receive, we give back. I think a full, rich life has to be premised on a greater spiritual understanding. Things alone, you know, external things don't make a full life. And I'm here to tell you, I know that from experience, because I have tried 
to make a full life with things again and again and again. I have filled up garages and houses with things that did not make a full life to the point where I'm still trying to reduce that inventory now, years later. Right? So we tell ourselves, because I have this particular problem, this condition going on in my life out in the world, that's, that, that just consumes my thinking. It controls my thinking. No. You, you individually control your thinking. Right? And your thinking is what will dissipate the seeming error conditions, the seeming problems in your life. Our present consciousness is always our future experience. So if I had a crystal ball, which I do not, remember those eight balls we had when we were kids? I love those. Those were so good. They always, they always had something good to say, didn't they? I don't know how that worked, but I always liked those. I, I'm going to get another one of those. Because I think in the future, when I don't know what to say to people, I'm just going to say, pick up the eight ball. Just pick up the eight ball, we'll know it's guided by God, and you, no, okay, I won't do that. But, but um, if I was a fortune teller and I had like a crystal ball, I could tell your future not by looking at the crystal ball, but by looking at your thoughts today. Because your thoughts today, you're thinking right now, the predominant thinking you have right now is what Ernest Holmes says, is what is going to be your future experience. So I don't have to look into a, few, a, a crystal ball to say what the future will be for you, for me. What I have to do, honestly, is I have to look at my own thinking. Because my own thinking is what is actually shaping my future experiences right now. We shouldn't fear the future. We should plan it. We should create it. The future can be what you decide it can be. So many people are so afraid of the future. Oh my God, they're afraid of all these external things. And I don't mean to imply that we shouldn't give our, any of our attention to those external things because some of them to us are very important and we should. But the future can be what we decide it will be. If you think it's all going downhill from here on out, that will be your experience. Now, I would say that today, right now, any time between now and right now, is a really good time to change that the future is all going downhill for me. Okay? The future can get better and better and better. We say, well, how is that possible? How can it get better? I don't see how it can be, get better. Because God is infinite. And we are working, we are immersed in God. We are surrounded and filled with the energy and activity and intelligence of God. And God knows no limitation. God doesn't say, wow, I'm really sorry, but that last birthday just sealed the deal for you. The good times have gone. You know, it's all getting worse. Thanks, happy birthday. Right? Know with me. Absolutely know with me that everything is God in form. And you can see and experience God everywhere if we would just allow ourselves to open up and have the eyes to see it. See, because the full life, the full, abundant, rich life is not about stress or strain because God does not struggle. Imagine that. God does not struggle. If God does not struggle, where did I get it from? Because I do really well with that. I must have inherited it from somebody. Well, it was certainly not our spiritual parentage that gave us that. You know, your heart's desire, I think, are your great assets. Your heart's desire is your great asset. Because if, if we have heart's desires, they're indicating to us the experiences we can have when we decide, when we commit, when we open ourselves fully and completely without reservation to having those experiences, those potentials. You know, th these potentials are waiting you know, for our attention. So think of them not as a possibility, but as a, oh yeah, it's already so. It's already so. So to move forward, I think we have to discard all indecision, all doubt, all fear. That's going to make traveling really light for some of us because we have a lot of indecision, a lot of doubt, and a lot of fear. And certainly it can be done, and you can do it. So a million years ago, I was on the track team. I hated to run. Why was I on the track team? It was a mystery to me. But I guess I wanted to belong. So I was on the track team. And one of the things they would do for us is um, we would run with weights on, uh, on our ankles so that later when we would run, we would run so much faster, we would feel so much freer because we weren't carrying an extra, say, five pounds on each ankle. You know, it's like, whoa, now I can really run. What's the feeling of that? And I think that as we discard the doubt and the fear 
and the indecision, that really weighs us down. It holds us back. It keeps us so earthbound that, you know, it, we have the capacity to let that go. After a certain period of time on the spiritual path, and I know it's different for everyone, it's not about learning new principles or gaining that perfect affirmation or anything like that. It seems to me that after we walk so far on the spiritual journey, there are no new principles. We know the principles. We, we work with the principles. We try to work with the principles more intelligently. It seems to me that more of the work that we're doing becomes about letting go and releasing this and releasing that and letting that person go and forgiving this and no longer being attached to that. It, it becomes a not an adding to process, but an undoing process. That is, we travel the spiritual path. It's about letting go of more and more and more, more and more of what I think I know or how I think it needs to be. Once you make a firm decision, I believe, to live a larger life, all indecision, doubt, fear, it, it cannot operate in your consciousness. You will notice it, but you will notice it and measure it against, oh, but I made a decision to live a larger, fuller life. I made a decision to be more fully expressed. Oh, there's my belief that I can't be expressed. See, there's an old idea in the race consciousness that there is virtue in going without what you really, really want, accepting less, that somehow this elevates us spiritually. Now, I think that that is just absolute nonsense, right? The way God gives to us is God gives us an idea. And so if God gives you an idea for a greater expression, if God says to you, you know, you could be healthier, you could be happier, you could have more love in your life, you could be more creatively expressed. If that comes to you, then God clearly has a way for that expression to be revealed in your life. You know, I think, you know, people think, well, you're talking about money. No, money is a means to an end. It's not the end in and of itself. The belief that money will solve your problems, I think that is a delusion. Your problems arise, my problems arise and are created by our mind, not by our bank account. Right? The way to solve problems is to change your thought and keep it changed. That's what science of mind teaches us. Change your thinking about something, keep it changed. You know, prosperity, this is, this is a state of consciousness, you know, which can be generated by you, by me, when we let money be a means and not the end. See, I think money is a process. It's not a goal. Money is God in action. So I don't think there's anything bad about money at all. It's the means by which the infinite creates in my affairs. Mm -hmm. So money needs to circulate for all of us because that's the means by which the infinite is creating in our body of affairs. You know, the way we handle outer details of our life is an indication of the state of consciousness functioning in our subconscious mind. So that's not bad news. That's really good news because the more we learn about what's operating in our subconsciousness, the more light we can bring into it, the more love, the more we can forgive, the more we can heal, the more we can let go and move forward, the more we have the capacity to rise up. You know, I see that lack or a fear of lack prevents people from really from having full expression in life. So make the decision that I am free from all lack and limitation now and always. Because again, God has already made the gift. God has already given all to all of us alike equally. And it's our job to say yes. Now, people, people always want to bring up Mother Teresa, you know? And, and, and it's like, you know, God, can't the woman get a break? Can, I mean, can she just have a rest for, oh, but Mother Teresa, Mother Teresa, you know, she took a vow of poverty. Yes, she did. But I don't see anybody here wearing a blue and white sorry. Do you? I mean, no, I, I'm serious. No. And, and that was appropriate for her, for the life she was living, for what God called her to. <coughs> but you'll notice we are not in the slums of India here. Although some days, I wonder. It's, uh, it's questionable. We, in our, in our course, Principles of Financial Freedom, one of my favorite lines is this. There may be other worlds without money, but this is not one of them. So in this world, we, we work with money. It's just the means of exchange, you know? And, and I don't think there's anything, anything bad about it, you know? Um, people always want to say that money oh, they got money and it made them different. No, it didn't. Money just made them more interesting, you know? It, 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 really, you know, because money magnifies who we are. So if you're a skunk now and you have no money, 
and you get money, you will be a skunk with money. I'm sorry, you know. But if you are a generous person now and you don't have any money, but down the road you get more money, you will be a generous person then because that's just the consciousness that you already are. So I'm going to invite us this morning to turn our attention inward for a moment and we'll do a little piece of inner work together. So let's start by bringing our awareness to the pattern of our breathing. Just notice your breathing in, notice your breathing out, and just be with that. I'm breathing in, I'm breathing out. And I know for each and every one of us that to live richly is our birthright. That as it says in the Psalms, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. I know for each and every one of us that we are a child of divine heritage, born to inherit the kingdom of all that is good. All the health, wealth, love, peace, and joy has been divinely ordained for each and every one of us because of all that I am, because of all that we are. The Father, Mother, God gives breath that we may live and move in that perfect presence. The Father, Mother, God within is not limited in any way. Therefore, I am not limited and I shall not be limited. I shall not want for any good thing. I shall not be denied any good thing. I know that hidden doors are now opening, invisible channels are now free, and that God's great good flows to each and every one of us, that God's perfect grace is upon us right now. We live in the sacred place of the Most High where there is an unlimited supply of bountiful resources and abundant treasures. I shall not want. I am healthy. I am free. I am whole. I am a divine, loving, loved, lovable being. I acknowledge my good. I accept it. I receive it here and now. I am certain that life does not deny me any good thing. And I now forbid my mind to entertain any fear of lack or scarcity. I forbid my mind to dignify nonsense. It makes no sense to deny my birthright. It is the Father, Mother, God's good pleasure to give us the kingdom. God is good and I accept good as mine. We shall not want now or ever. And we include in our prayer our family members and friends, our parents and children, all of those we love and hold near and dear, and we surround them with a light of truth and claim for them healing, peace, prosperity, well-being in every way. We let our prayer be an energy of blessing, an energy of healing that emanates out from our sanctuary to touch all people everywhere on the face of the globe. Everyone, 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 no one excluded. That we have a God that is big enough, a God that is loving enough, that it can embrace every soul on the planet. And so we bless our church and we bless all churches, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God. And I'm certain that we are blessed by being together today that together we create a collective consciousness that lifts us up above all conditioned into the truth that we are as God made us, whole, perfect, and free. And so it is with a grateful heart that I release this word into God's perfect law. I know it's done, and so it is. Together we all say, Amen. All right, we'll sing one time together. so blessed I am so blessed I am so grateful for all that I have I am so blessed I am so blessed I am 
All right, I invite you to hold your gift over your heart and we'll say our statement of giving together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you very much. Sam. Thank you, Dr. Mark. You rock. <laughs> I oftentimes wonder why I choose particular songs to sing at service, but I know why. Um, this song was written a number of years ago. I met a woman in, in a 12-step program, and she said, regardless of all the religious upbringing in the church she'd been to. She'd never experienced God before in her life. And I went home and I wrote this. From a red bud on my favorite rose bush To the smile on her grandmother's face To the dew on a single blade of grass I keep seeing in the smallest ways From the hoop of an old horn owl To the laughter of children that play To the first was so passing my son's lips I keep hearing in the smallest ways When I pay such close attention There's no judgment in my life, there's only love in the smallest ways. In the smallest ways. From the birth of my only baby to the song that I've sung full of grace, to the loss of a mentor not meant to be mine. I keep Feeling in the smallest ways From a breath of night blooming jasmine To your scent permeating my days I can call to mine But I can't find I keep breathing in the smallest ways When I pay such close attention To the tear that I stole from your face In gelato we shared on the boulevard I keep falling in the smallest ways When I give in to sweet surrender And I know that God is in this place There's only love in the smallest 
smallest way In the smallest ways I keep seeing In the smallest ways I keep hearing In the smallest ways I keep feeling In the smallest ways I keep breathing In the smallest ways I keep falling In the smallest ways I dropped my mic, I dropped my mic, I threw it on the ground, I treated it with disrespect, and I'm taking my mask off. Jamie Lula, thank you. Oh my God, Sam McCann, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and you can get Jamie's music at jamielula.com, J-A-M-I-L-U-L-A.com. And announcements, announcements, announcements. Uh, sorry, we do that teen camp. Um, if you were spiritually fed today, we invite you to give your tithe or gift, and there are a variety of ways that you can do that. You can call the office, 818-762-7566. You can go to nhcrs.org slash give. That's my favorite way. Text the word give to 818-457-3419. And remember, shop Amazon Smile. It's freebies for the church. You're all on Amazon anyway. So please sign up. Um, we have Prayer with a Practitioner up here at the church or on Zoom. If you're on Facebook, please just zip over to Zoom and you can uh, sit with a practitioner. Wednesday evening, December 1st, Reverend Sidney will be leading us in a special remembrance service. Meditation, 6.50 p.m. Service starts at 7 p.m. Together, we are going to honor people that we've lost this year. So please bring pictures and mementos to display on our remembrance altar. It's going to be a really heartwarming night, so please join us. Youth church is open, yay, 945 service. Youth of all ages are welcomed. We're still doing our 2022 Journey of the Heart campaign. The pledge forms are out there in the foyer. And you know, this is how we're able to budget. So we just are looking for a commitment. A dollar, five dollars, 50,000. We're not particular, <laughs> but we're just looking for that commitment so that we can budget how we can serve the community. So please sign up for that. Grief support on Zoom, facilitated by our beautiful Carol Winokur. It meets today on Zoom, 1 p.m. We have our Christmas Giving Tree event. So if you'd like to participate, remember all gifts will be delivered to the church today, unwrapped with an appropriate sized gift bag. Please contact Gail, Gail Pelotti. She is here right now. She will be collecting Target and Velarte gift cards until December 5th and the gift distribution is December 9th. Please participate. Um, there's been a change of our Christmas program. Our youth Christmas program is gonna be Sunday, December 12th in the sanctuary, 1115, and it's so much fun. Bring your kids, there's storytelling, there's songs, there's Santa Claus, there's Mrs. Claus, there's some delicious, delightful elves here. So please bring your children, we have a wonderful time here. And our bookstore is open for 30 minutes after service every Sunday, please stop by. We have our Zoom, Zoom virtual patio before and after church on Sunday and Wednesdays, you can participate there. And here's the coolest thing, Zoom meditation. Great way to start your day. Every morning, Monday through Saturday, 8 a.m., 15 minutes, and you are anchoring yourself in a day of goodness. Thank you so much. Go to nhcrs.org for all the information that you need. Blessings, please rise for our peace song.
So please repeat after me. I'm at home in the heart of God. My life is anchored in truth. I can never be separate. I live in the consciousness of peace. I release all fear. I am living love. Amen. Thank you. Thank you.